Howdy, how's it going? My name's Daffy Chappie, and today it's time to drink our own piss, because I'm gonna be teaching you how to not get yourself killed in each type of natural environment that you can find on the material plane. I'm gonna alphabetically go over every terrain, give a few example homebrew rules for DMs who want to make places feel more realistic, and I'll give a few examples of monsters that you're likely to come across in each land. Keep in mind, as always, that this is just my opinion, so feel free to eat whatever wild berries you come across, and remember, leave your food in a basket next to you when you go to sleep. But, with that out of the way, let's begin. So, starting off our list, we have one of the least survivable and most unfun terrains out out there, the Arctic Tundra. This is one of those, if you don't come prepared, you are going to die areas, because if you don't pack heavy, you'll freeze your chromatic orbs off faster than you can say winter is coming. Here you'll face difficult terrain in the form of snow and ice, you'll have to make con saves every hour to resist exhaustion in the form of extreme cold, and you'll most likely become either completely or partially blind when the wind picks up and the snow decides to get up all in your eyes' grills. And don't even get me started on how the natural terrain wants to kill you. Avalanches coming from above you, freezing water hidden by thin sheets of ice and snow below you, and monsters in the form of snow wolves polar bears, beer hags, even the occasional white dragon will teach you that the further north you go, the further south your day is going to go as a result. Side note, as a prank, if you're teaching somebody magic, you should totally start by teleporting them into a blizzard on top of a mountain. They'll appreciate it later. Now, if you were looking for a safe place to rest and relax and not worry about the stresses in life, then you picked the wrong job, buddy boy, because if you've been sent to a coastal terrain, I can only assume that the DM is going to make it way less fun than it should be. You see that sand? That's evil sand. You see that water? That water's probably animate and wants to kill you if you try to swim in it. As a terrain, there isn't a whole lot to worry about from the how can you die from terrible causes aspect, but keep in mind that I'm using coastal as a catch-all term for anything that involves water, since what else am I going to talk about with the beach terrain? So things like drowning still apply, and creepy fish people like mermaids, Sahuagin, and deep scions will periodically show up to get their moist fishy lips all over you. Not to mention roaming bands of pirates who always happen to be just sailing right by where you are, and are always prepared to batten down your life wenches. Long story short, enjoy the sun, get a tan, have some fish food, walk the plank. And now, for the furthest thing from a coast, the second in the list of you will die if you stay here terrains, the desert. Much like the tundra, if you don't pack excessive amounts of water and cold storage, you will get exhausted in absolutely no time at all, which, fun fact, eventually leads to your fried freaky death. Not to mention sandstorms, which are like blizzards, but instead of snow, it's sand, and it's rough and coarse, and it gets everywhere. The worst part is that things that survive in the deserts usually have managed to survive by being in a combination of incredibly resourceful, crafty, or dangerous creatures, and they are used to living in a world where the ground is hot enough to cook bacon on. You've got Yanti, ancient mummies, giant scorpions, earth, and air elementals. Oh, and did I mention quicksand? I probably should have mentioned quicksand. Yeah, at any point, the ground itself could just decide that you no longer have to live and pull you under to your death. Have fun with that knowledge. But, moving on to one of the most common and less deadly terrains that if you haven't already come across, then you have been playing a different game, the forest. I don't need to explain what a forest is to you. Walk outside. You see a tree? That's the forest. Get more trees. That's a real forest. Look at the grass. That ain't a forest. Lots of places have grass. You ain't special. Look back at the tree. Now that's a forest. Forests have trees, and animals, and plants, and if you don't watch out, you'll get killed by all three. The trees can animate themselves and attack you, and fighting them is a pain because they're big, they're heavy, they're wood. Carnivorous plants can lure you in and wrap their vines around you to devour you, and not only will you find wild animals like bears that want to beat you up, but you'll also have magical creatures like shambling mounds, woodwodes, and if your forest has any enchanted qualities to it, fairies and pixies will also show up to make your life a living hell. Essentially, forests are fine to walk through until other things start walking too, and it's the perfect place to remind players to always stay on their guard. Remember when I said that grass is in a forest? Well, the grassland terrain took a middle finger to that joke, since there's all kinds of grass in this land. Honestly, there's not much to say about this terrain. You literally know all about it from the name. This terrain and the hills terrain are so basic and unnecessary to talk about that instead, here's a video of me antagonizing my sister. Anita. Nita. Yes, David. Nita. Yes. Nita. What? What is it? Nita. What is your requirement? Nita. Nita. Hey, Nita. Yes, David. Are you playing Overwatch? Yes. Hey, Nita. Hey, Nita. Are you winning? No. Hey, Nita. Hey, Nita. Nita. Hey, Nita. Nita. Does it seem like I'm winning? My teammates are not doing such a great job. Hey, Nita. 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 Oh no! Oh no! I died. Far over the misty mountains cold Through dungeons deep in caverns old You'll get your shit wrecked If there is gas And if there's cave trolls They'll definitely kick your ass 
Whether you're going over or under the mountains, it's gonna be a bit of a trek, and you'd better have a climbing speed if you want to live very long. Or alternatively, don't have a climbing speed, and you'll actually live for quite a while, depending on how far the hole you fell down is. But if you plan on going up and over, make sure that you watch out for the DM's favorite weapon, falling rocks. And if you encounter a bat, a band of orcs, or an anise hag, make sure that they don't watch out for falling rocks, since the enemy of my enemy is a giant boulder. Also be wary of incredibly narrow paths along the sides of a mountain, the fact that there's no food, like, anywhere until you come across enemies that you can cannibalize, and that cloud giants actually like to make homes here, or else you'll realize that for all of its chiseled features, mountains don't really rock. Dude, swamps suck. Every other step is difficult terrain. There's bugs everywhere, and there's all sorts of creepy monsters that have decided to call this place home. Seriously, swamps, marshes, bogs, mutt houses, whatever you want to call them, going to this type of terrain is just asking the DM to throw a new and disgusting creature at you, since for some reason, all of the really macabre stuff always ends up living in swamps, away from civilization. And it doesn't help that every step you take gets you sunk deeper and deeper into the muddy bog that is the ground beneath you, varying from difficult terrain to straight-up strength checks if you want to move, so things like grungs, giant toads, frogs, Hemoths, and other such gross amphibious things will quickly catch up to you and rib it right into your face. Not to mention things that aren't frogs, but let's be perfectly honest, frogs are the single most dangerous thing in D&D. The second most dangerous thing is mosquitoes, burn mosquitoes with a righteous passion. And finally, the most dangerous terrain out there, and also one of the most famous, it's dark, it's underground, it's the light, dark, underdark. God, that title was dumb. The Underdark is a subterranean system of caves and tunnels that often funnel out into an entire complex of underground societies made up of deep versions of surface races like Drow, Druger, and Svurf Neblins. While it's not inherently a cavernous hellscape on its own, the amount of incredibly deadly and very unhappy inhabitants of the Underdark make traversing these caverns a hell and a half. Things like mind flares sucking your brains out, oozes that seep through the cracks of the cave, hook horrors that grab you and pull you in, and flail snails that will flail you with their flail snail flails. Your only ally in all of the Underdark is the Flumph, a weird alien looking creature that makes a flump noise as it floats. These things are harmless and enjoy being nice to people, two things that are almost universally excluded from the Underdark, so if you see one, have it find the nearest exit and run the hell out of it, because I'm starting to hear skittering. Is that a drider? But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment if you did, and maybe subscribe if you want to be a cool dude. Also, if you want to stay up to date on all of your Dabby news, I keep a link to my Discord in the description below. But yeah, Dabby out.